Hello lovely people, how are you all doing today? I hope you're well. I am mostly, although <laughs> I've just jarred my back. It's so stupid. Never mind. Just do what I can do today. So, I'm following on from the tour video you saw. It's the same day for me. And, um, oh, I can't wait. I feel... You know, when we got to the end of August, there was such a feeling of disappointment because of the beans. I don't want to go on one, but yeah, such a feeling of disappointment. And I know, oh, just reaching for my water, I know that so many of you were having disappointments too. And I think it was just, it was just such a long season in terms of it being so hot, so dry all the time. I think it really just, it took the edge off of the joy, frankly. But here we are in the first few days of September. We're having lovely weather. It's warm. It's the kind of warmth where there might be a little bead of sweat later on, but it's not hot. There's a stiff breeze, which might muck up sound, but never mind. There's a stiff breeze that's lovely and cooling. We've had in the last week, so in the last couple of days of August, and then again yesterday, we've had loads of rain, loads of rain. Great. And it really, you know, the, the green in some places has come back, the paths are green again. It's lovely. So I just feel, I, I feel my spirits lifting. And I'm really looking forward to the next month in the garden. There's going to be lots to do in terms of gardening itself, um, but also lots of harvesting, you know? That's what it's all about, isn't it? My harvesting will go on right through to about the end of October, as in big harvests. Obviously through the winter there will be things to pick. Brassicas, more of that in a second, because we're going to do some brassicas today. So yeah, I think there's a feeling of there's a sort of more buoyant feeling in the air at the moment and actually there's a few other plot holders down and you can see it in them too everybody just looks everyone looks more relaxed i think it's that thing of god that was such a hard summer such a hard summer but it's done with so today it's all about onions and brassicas now two things one with the onions I've mentioned before, they ought to have been lifted by the end of July. My onions went in a couple of weeks late this year. They normally go in right at the beginning of April. It was more like mid-April. <clears throat> so by the beginning of July, when they would normally be starting to go over and think about harvesting, they weren't ready then. But by about the middle of July, Yes, they were starting to go over by the end of July. They'd pretty much all gone over. When I say gone over, the tops, the green tops had flopped over and were starting to go brown and die back. Brilliant, perfect time for lifting. It didn't happen <laughs> because of the heat wave, <coughs> as you know by now, and other things. So it's going to happen today. I've got one slight concern with them and that is that we have had quite a bit of rain in the last six days or so that I might have got a little bit of rot. So when I lift them all, I'll look at them all really carefully. Any that show little signs of that, they will come home with me. I will use them first. Otherwise, the rest of them, they'll come here <laughs> into my onion drying rack above my head there's going to have to be a massive jiggle around today because I've got bags and bags of lavender up there which will need to come down, have strings on and be tied to hang underneath. There's also the bag of celery seed saving that's up there. So yeah, big jiggle around, but that will be for later. So yes, get the onions out, have a good look at them. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do today, normally I would lift them with a trowel, lift them individually because it's been such a dry summer, I'm actually going to put the fork in a ways away from them to, to pop them out because I just want to break up the surface of the soil a bit. A, 
to let moisture in and B to get a little bit of compost in. More of that when I do it. Then I'm going to be following them. Oh, hang on a sec, I've got a visitor. As you were. Uh, plot neighbours bearing gifts. Um, half a ton of unused paint. Can you see the colour? It's called Boathouse Blue. How lovely. Even if it only does one side of the shed, I don't mind if it's different colours because you only ever see the front. I'd like to keep the grey on the front because I like the grey, but yes, thank you. Fabulous. Um, yeah, so very quickly, um, onions out, brassicas in. Now, I'm going to do something I, I never normally do. I'm going to put seedlings straight into the ground. Normally, I prick out my seedlings from their trays, pop them on, grow them on, then plant them out. But the reason I do that is because at the stage when they need pricking out, the onions are, are still in. So these ones today, it's my third sowings. Now, also just to quickly say, <clears throat> as you will have seen from the tour video, the pressure is slightly off in the brassica department because my scrappy little cavolineros are looking great and my scrappy little purple sprouting broccolis are starting to look good. And they're my two... <laughs> So many people around today. They're the two that I really, really like. So, Corallinero all through the winter, purple sprouting broccoli into the spring. But I've also got that lovely kale and the cauliflowers. So, the pressure is off. I'm going to plant them today in a way I, I wouldn't normally, but that's okay. I might as well put them in because those beds will be empty otherwise. And it's nice to have that feeling of, oh, if they don't work, no stress, no stress. So without further ado, let's go and lift these onions and uh, see if they've all managed to survive the last few days of rain we've had. Yeah, a bit wet on the bottom. <laughs> see the the tops have almost disappeared already hardly anything left of them and I don't know if you can tell but they are a little bit wet on the bottom so yeah this isn't a moment too soon <clears throat> this ground this bed after I planted was really heavily mulched you know a good inch on there it was some of last autumn's leftover um, leaves that hadn't rotted down I strimmed and strimmed and strimmed them and covered this entire bed 
but you can see it's almost it's almost all disappeared sure some of it blew away but I'm hoping a lot, lot of it actually got taken down so some of the let's have a little look at the soil underneath oh it's quite dry look at that for all that rain it is quite dry but it's not as compact as in previous years so hopefully that mulch really helped and what I'm pleased with is although quite a lot of the onions are small-ish most of them they're round about this size that's a perfectly good size for me in the kitchen okay let's get the rest of these out and then start thinking about prepping this bed for a new crop white, 70 red. I've already had about 10 of each um, and there are about three of each which we completely rotten. So you know it's okay. It's it's one and a half onions a week for the next year. They won't last a year. Generally by about April, May uh, they'll start to sprout so I'll have them before then but when we get to that April, May time, any that I've got left, before they have a chance to sprout, chop them up, freeze them, they'll keep. Now, the only thing I'm just slightly concerned about this year that I want to point out, I'm just going to change one around. I'm sitting on a slope, which is not good for my cronky back today. Wow, whenever the clouds part, that sunshine is bright. I did say, didn't I, that it would probably be the kind of day to make me a bit sweaty. It's all good. So, my very slight concern about doing the harvest so late, and this is definitely something I will keep an eye on in the shed over the coming weeks. <coughs> Excuse me, that's the sunshine again. Because I've lost a lot of the foliage. Most of the foliage from most of the onions is already lost. And normally, when I put them in the shed to dry, part of the process of that is the skin around the neck shrinks and as it shrinks it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and it forms a seal around the neck of the onion and that essentially seals the package for storage so where I haven't really got much of a neck left no neck <laughs> neck no neck um, where I haven't got much of a neck left it may mean that they don't store so well so when I say I'm concerned about it, I don't mean I'm concerned like, oh, I'm going to lose my harvest. All I mean is it's just something to be aware of. So knowing that I've got very little neck, I'll just keep an eye on them over the winter as they store in the shed. If, and I'll have a little squeeze from time to time, and if it looks like they're not storing well, bring them home, chop them up in the freezer. I'll need a fourth freezer at this rate, won't I? So yeah, it's just something to be mindful for yourselves too. I'm sure you all got your onions out weeks ago, um, but for any with very little neck for shrinkage in the drying process, just keep an eye on them. Right, I think I'm going to have a quick glass of water and then we can get back to these two beds to prep them. Uh, in readiness for receiving some little brassica babies. Okay, so in terms of prep for the next crop, the brassicas, I actually don't want to do too much to either of these beds. There's masses of worm activity. As I was hiking out the um, onions, loads and loads of worms, great big juicy gorgeousnesses. So that is partly explaining where a lot of the mulch is gone. They've taken it down, which is great. So I don't want to do too much by way of, I don't really want to 
dig as I would have done in the past. I'd have given this whole bed a good dig over, loosen all the soil again. But I'm really, really trying not to muck around with my soil structure so much these days. Plus, I'm trying not to dig so much either because of the old stupido news. So, in lifting the onions, that has sort of broken clumps up a little bit. There actually is a bit of moisture down there and it's not as compact as it's been in previous years. Now that might be because we have had rain in the last week. You know, if I was doing this during the heat wave, maybe it would have been more compact, but it's definitely not compact. There's some clumps which are sitting together. That's always gonna be the case with clay. So rather than dig the whole bed over, all I'm going to do now is I'm gonna scatter some chicken manure pellets over the whole bed. I've got my watering cans ready. I'll give those all a bit of a water. And then from all that compost I bought back at the beginning of May, I reserved a bag for this bed and a bag for the red onion bed, now X onion beds. I'm gonna scatter that over the top. And with the fork, I'm just gonna very lightly incorporate that a little bit so that it doesn't just dry and blow off. Once I've got all that done, I can start planting. And once I've planted, it's gonna be time to go back to the compost bin, dig it out and get mulching. So let's crack on. Let's get these uh, top couple of layers on to begin with and get them ever so slightly incorporated. But I will just say, I am relieved and delighted by A, the amount of worm activity in this bed and B, by the fact that it's I'm not, when I was putting the fork in and, and lifting the onions, I wasn't getting those kind of massive, big slabs that I normally get. So, yay! But I've also got whew, this had the loofah in it in the coal frame. So this is spent compost, but it can all. <laughs> help to mess of roots. It can all help towards the um, keeping the clay a bit, a bit lighter, a bit looser. And the little bits of roots in there, the worms can enjoy. Whoa, out for a tickle. Who's up for a tickle? There are certainly going to be some lumps and bumps and slightly compact bits in here, but I just, you know, when I come to planting, if there is a big, big lumpy bit, I'll just break it.
And every now and again, like a rock. Oh, missed. Rocking the tomato bed. Okay, let me get on with these two beds. I'll huff and puff in my own time and uh, see you back here when it's time to start planting. What a beautiful day. <laughs> a little gusty from time to time. But just here with the sun on my back, could be summer. Right, time to get planting. So this bed, I'm going to do calabrese, uh, what you might call broccoli. And in the bed over, I'm going to do, my label says cabbage. I don't know what kind, never mind. So as I say, this is kind of, this does feel weird for me to be planting seedlings direct like this needs must and all that now one thing today I was mentioning a bit earlier um, my back is feeling really sore uh, I, goodness knows was it picking up that bag of compost I don't know so what I might do today is get everything planted I've got some of my little ready-made net tunnels for these because they're so little I may not mulch today, uh, getting all this stuff out of the compost bin, it might just not be a good idea for my back. I may get to it, I may not, because I'm trying to save a bit of energy because I've got the net tunnels for these, that's great, but where the Cavallo Nero are, and at the top of the garden where I've got the kale and cauliflower, I need to build much bigger nets for them where they've grown, and I'm just conscious that that's more important at the moment because of you know, protecting them from the cabbage white butterflies which are still around. So I'll focus on netting, get all that done and then if after that I feel up to it then I'll do some mulching. Otherwise I'll go home, stretch, come back tomorrow to mulch. So brassicas, it's the usual story, get them in, get them down really firm. Later in the year, probably about November, after the last of the cabbage whites have disappeared, I will, it's really hard just, suddenly, just to say, it's hard to think about spacing when they're such little plants, because I'm very visual, so I'm used to doing my spacing with much bigger plants. I think that will do it. Um, yeah, I will take the nets off around about November, probably, at which point the plants should be considerably more established. And at that stage, when the nets are off, I can put stakes in for all of them because something else that brassicas hate is wind rock. They hate being blown around, knocked around, what have you. I'm not putting the stakes in now for the obvious reason that by the time I put a great big stake in, I won't be able to put the nets over. Also, I don't have any sticks free for staking. So, yes, onwards, onwards, upwards. Um, in good and firm, they'll get a stake later on. Not just in good and firm, but in fairly deep. So, here's the crazy thing. I'm gonna end up with spares. I've got a tiny bit of compost left, so I might prick these, some of them out. I'll do the best ones in today, but prick some of them out. And then if any of these get eaten, please, I hope not, then I've got spares. Just trying to see which ones are the best. That might do for this row, and then a couple more. Yeah, they'll do. Right, this is going to uh, involve me bum shuffling along the row, which nobody needs to see. So let me get on with that. And then hopefully in a couple of hours or so, I can bring you back, not a couple of hours to you, a couple of my hours. And I'll give you a quick review of all the brassica beds. I need to get planting. And <laughs> um, yeah, the cabbage on the bed, right in a minute. Get on, Vivi.
I brought the dibber along with me. I don't know why. I don't need it. Um, because this soil is loose enough for me to poke holes into. Yay! Well, this is a really amazing, satisfying sight. It isn't mulched, but at least they're in. So I've now got calabres, cavolinero, cabbage, uh, purple sprouting broccoli, and then right at the top, I haven't put the net on yet, is the, um, there's a bit of kale and cauliflowers in there. Need to do this net. I've got to say, I have really really made my back angry so I think laying off doing the mulching today is a good idea I'd like to go home but as I'm always saying food is a great incentive so I'm very incentivized to get that covered and protected so just to say so obviously I've got the one now two <laughs> and then three four five beds for winter for brassicas and well the purple sprouting is sort of into spring so that's great along with these five beds for winter i've got 20 beds in total i've got the four main big beds each of which is divided into five so 20 beds so five with brassicas this half a bed with parsnips the chard will stay in and i'm thinking where i took out the bolted salads I'm going to have one last go with a few more carrots. Uh, they're autumn king, so they might do for me. And we're warm, the soil is still warm, but we're a bit moister. And then my other thought was, coming back around this way, where I've got the cavolo nero and <laughs> a couple of random carrots, I've still got another couple of cavolo nero plants, so I think... I'll have the last of the leeks out of this end, pop a couple more cavolo in. I might even be able to get one, two, three cavolos in because, oh, let me come right past, step around the gigantes. This is a bit easier from this direction. You can see where I've got the Envirimesh on. I've got tons of it folded at this end and the other end. And you can probably see along at the soil level, I've got tons rolled and folded. So it's my last job, apart from the getting that net on up there that's sitting on the floor at the moment. This one I need to take off, make the hoops slightly taller, and then I've got that much more, I've got that sort of slack in the nets to recover. So, oh, I'm just going to sit down. I've got my little, ooh la la, gardening stool here still. Yeah, I think, um, however it was that I picked up that bag of compost, I did it really, really thoughtlessly, carelessly, and I've proper tweaked my back and it's not happy with me. So, I will get these last couple of jobs done and get myself home and do my stretches but I'm delighted so that's five six nearly seven beds for winter plus of course when the flint corn comes out what's going in there no you're talking out of your hat Vivi what I meant to say is behind this is where I've got my purple sprouting and the bed behind where I've got the main crop potatoes they will come out and garlic will go in and then just swinging around this way. Can you see how things have gotten a bit greener with this last couple of days of rain? Isn't it nice to see green paths again beside the Point Vivi? When the uh, Gardener's Delight tomatoes come out, which will probably be around the first week of October, in here will go broad beans. This year with a lot of chilli and tool to hopefully keep the mice off oh just to say as well very quickly um oh let me just pan as i talk so you can enjoy some of this green the the little modules that i sewed these most recent brassicas in i then completely wrapped them in tulle so that they were over the top and tucked underneath and all the way around the sides it seems to have worked a treat to keep slugs and snails off 
because I have seen slugs and snails on them, on the top of the tool, leaving their little silvery trails, but they haven't been able to get in to nibble these precious. <laughs> Goodness, they're so tiny. Can you make them out in there even? Look, so tiny, so tiny. But yeah, fingers crossed, not a nibble under the tool. But now they're in the big wide world and we're getting a bit damper, so that means probably a few more of the slime bags are going to be around. Oh well, we can only do what we can do. No more, no less. So, with this lovely bit of greenery to show you and the beautiful red of the, oh, look at that Amish paste, just dripping, waiting to be scoffed. I'm going to bid you all a very fond farewell a very happy cheerio. I hope you're managing to get some of your autumn jobs done. I hope you're having beautiful days to enjoy doing your jobs. And of course, still, so many lovely harvests. I've just realised I need to pick some tomatoes before I go home too. Oh, isn't it wonderful when your day is so long because there are so many veggies in your life? Yay! All right, my lovelies, the winter garden is almost in and it says bye for now, everyone. See you all again really soon, I hope. Take care.